How can you grow faith throughout your whole life? WCF's Faith Launch Program is designed to help you answer that huge question as you embark on your own life journey. The answer matters because the true measure of our life is faith, learning to set aside our instincts and to trust God and His Son. You develop this faith in the decisions you make, the relationships you form, and the trials you encounter. Faith Launch gives you a set of strong faith-building tools, connects you with a network of peers and mentors, and helps you reflect on the best faith plan to help guide you through your journey. Faith Launch starts fall 2020 and is aimed at young adults between the ages of 18 and 35. There is no cost to participate, and to better accommodate your schedule, much of the program will be delivered online. The program wraps up with a final retreat to weave together key learnings and send off participants with fresh faith inspiration. To find out more, visit wcfoundation.org slash faithlaunch. Hi, this is Levi. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to take a quick minute to introduce a few of the other podcasts in the WCF Podcast Network. Tom and Naomi are exploring how we interact in our ecclesial relationships in From the Platform. It's a very in-depth series that is incredibly helpful for understanding and developing compassion and better listening practices. That's From the Platform. Sam Taylor from Cleveland, Ohio, produces weekly devotionals in Pause to Consider. Think uh, Mr. Rogers meets uh, Fireside Chat. I love Sam's humble style and think every episode is fantastic. You can find both of those wherever you get your podcasts or on our website at wcfoundation.org. Now, here's the show. Welcome back, everyone, to A Little Faith. I'm Matt, and I have the great joy to be sitting outside with my very dear friend, which is an, an understatement, Jessica Jelano. Hi, everyone. And we I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm happy to be here. I am. We're sitting on Jess and Levi's back lawn. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you want to point out any distinguishing features about your lawn? Well, we're so we're sitting in some Adirondack chairs that we have back here, and we love our backyard, Levi and I, because we have um, lots of different plant, little plants that mm. we look after. We're not great gardeners by any stretch, <laughs> but we do have some that we're proud of, and we have a passion fruit vine, and we have some olive trees, and some some herbs, and some you know, pepper plants. And so it's just nice. Right now is a nice time of year to be in the backyard because everything's really growing at its finest. We're essentially sitting underneath an olive tree. So it's about as biblical as it gets. Um, (laughs) So on today's episode, I am going to be exploring with Jess her love and her passion of pie baking. Jess is masterful at many things, but the thing that possibly that she is known by amongst people in her friend group and amongst those that she loves and love her is that Jess is masterful at making pies. And so uh, I'm hoping to hear a little bit about the origin story of what got you into baking pies. Sure. Um, So I've always liked to eat pie as far as I can remember. Um, so that's, that's part of it. My, my mom made a lot of pie as when I was growing up and, um, my grandmother, uh, Marie Sweeney, she was always a, um, as you said, masterful pie baker. So, um, making pie was sort of, uh, pie was sort of like the dessert of our family, I would say growing up. And I didn't really know how to make it until like shortly after I was married, I had received a pie cookbook and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a book of 300 pie recipes. And I just kind of thought to myself, you know, this is something I would really like to be good at. I, you know, I don't really know where to start, but I think I'm just going to make the decision to become a pie maker and you know, learn how to make my own pastry and just kind of see how it goes because it's something that I love to eat and I don't actually know that many people in my age group who regularly make pies and it's not, it's sort of, it almost felt a little bit like a, like a, a lost art type of thing. So 
I thought, you know, for my for the sake of my generation, like I'll be I'll learn to be the pie baker. So then I did that. <laughs> Started working through that and, cookbook. <laughs> and so and so many yeah. of us have and do benefit from that passion. How uh, how many pies do you think you've made in your life? I think I have made probably about 250 to 300 pies. Different types. Or mm, I have so so I'm I kind of alluded to before I'm I'm like actually working my way systematically through this pie cookbook that I was given so it's become like a really important uh, book to me. So I have I have made about 155 of those recipes but I have also at this point just made up many many more pies and I have not documented that. So I I just would have to guess, but yeah, I would probably guess, you know, probably 250 unique, unique types of pie at this point, because I end up making up a lot of my own recipes. Mm. And I I think I've enjoyed about 12 of those, which, (laughs) which, which is pretty good considering we don't live anywhere near each other. Right. Yeah. What does pie mean to you, Matt? Okay. Pie. I have, I have memories of standing on a kitchen chair, c- caked in flour, just making a plume of dried spices, you know, in the air with my grandma's hands over my hands, mm-hmm. and um, making like a peach pie, or and just making a mess of the entire kitchen and myself in the process, and then eating the pie with grandma. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I guess like on first on first glance, pie baking does not come off as a spiritual exercise and you know is maybe you think of diners or you think of dessert or you think of those oh there was a restaurant in in kansas city that had like a rotating pie collection thing like that's a that's a feature in a lot of like new jersey diners too like that's like oh yeah um the but, rounded and it's just yeah, like the yeah. the quintessential rounded glass right. like window where you walk in and all the pies are lined up in there and yeah. yeah. But I think uh, as you you and I were were giving a, a chat about this podcast and what this could be about and as we trickled into talking more about pie baking and your love of pie baking, I think we discovered that like there's something uh, there's something there to pie baking that is an art. And that has an undercurrent of a lot of deeply spiritual practices and themes. Hmm. So the first thing that comes to mind is that pie just happens to be something that I chose to be part of, a big part of my story. It could have been other things, right? Yeah. So like you said, there's not maybe something inherently spiritual about it, mm-hmm. but... Um, yeah, I think be- because I chose pie to be a part of my story and because I believe that I am part of God's story, that yes, there are pieces there. And actually really the the main reason that I want to make pie ends up being sort of, you know, part of my spiritual life, um, which I think we can, you know, continue to, to talk about. But I just wanted to say that, like, Whatever you, whatever it is that you do, or you know that you feel passionate about, God can make that part of His story. And for me, that just happens to be pie, which is what we're talking about tonight. Mm. Um, so whenever I get together with Jess and Levi, and now their daughter Pippa, being around a table is such a common theme. And I think pie is something that was never designed to be eaten alone. Uh, (laughs) for sure. So whenever you're making a pie, there are other people. Yeah, yeah. There's anticipation of sharing Mm. that's taking place there because you Mm. don't, yeah, you don't plan to just make one for yourself. You you know that you're going to be sharing it and that's part of the, the joy of the whole experience. So, so talk to me more about sharing and gathering in pie baking. At this point, it's hard to narrow down <laughs> stories because there really are so many. And it's become more of, uh, more of like a pattern in my life than like an individual story. So many of our 
um, travels. Levi and I love to travel. And so many of our travels will end up incorporating, you know, a day where I, I bake a pie for the people that I'm staying with um, or visiting with as, you know, sort of a way to say thank you and I appreciate you and I'm, I'm happy to be here with you. Like that, that ends up being something that I do when I travel as well as when I'm at home. And well, what's funny is what's popping into my mind is more recently how um, it just this year things have been so different. Levi and I haven't been able to just invite, you know, a crowd of people around to our house anytime we've wanted to after, you know, March or so. So since that hasn't been possible, I've, I've off, like started looking at other ways to share and other ways to make people feel included through like the vehicle of pie, which is like how I, <laughs> that's my, my main love language, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, I've done things during the COVID pandemic, like buy individual little clamshells where you can put, you know, a single piece, of, like a p- piece of pie, like a little nice package. And I've gone around and like dropped those off at of people's houses or, you know, just, just found other ways to share because I still wanted to continue um, baking pie, but I in no way wanted to, to do that just for myself. So it's, yeah, it, it's become a way that I can think about how to use it to make other people feel included. I think there's something too about pie, maybe specifically, and w- with a pie, like a homemade pie, there's some clear time that goes into making it. Um, if you're going to make a, a, like a pie pastry and then you're going to make a filling and then, you know, maybe there's like a topping and it's usually a, like a multiple hour um, proposal from start to finish. It can be more, more so even, but that's just sort of like your basic pie is going to take a couple hours. And I think people recognize that. And I, I, I really do um, think it makes people feel very loved to have someone make something delicious to give to them and for whatever reason to me in particular that like pie feels like one of those things whether it's you know people have I think people do have like family like a lot of time family memories it's something that I think a lot of people's grandmothers or you know sort of older relatives have made and they have like almost this nostalgia about Mm. so yeah I've had some Mm. some really nice moments you know Mm. just just seeing people's reaction and um, and joy when they mm. get to participate in that. Some of you may be familiar with the five love languages. It turns out there's a sixth language, pie, and Jess is fluent in it. <laughs> I guess technically it's an extension of the gifts uh, love language probably, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, w- while you were talking, I, I just thought about like if a slice of pie appeared in front of me, I would eat it in, you know, two and a half minutes probably, depending on how mm-hmm. big the slice was. Mm-hmm. But you talking about it was a process to craft mm-hmm. and there was intentionality in it and there was like love is baked into it. Like yes. the full thing is an articulation of love, process to product. And while I'm eating it, I'm like, oh, this is really nice. Or after I've eaten it, it's like, oh, I don't know. There's, I think there's something there about the things that God crafts and puts in our lives that, that take time and w- what other people craft too that are very oh, much actions of love and are momentary joys. Um, but yeah. it just, it seems like such a crime that, yeah. that you're the love and the, the effort and the intention that you put into it. There's a very quick read receipt that sometimes you don't even mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I think so much of, I don't know, so much of life is like that. I I think for me too, I also recognize that um, I'm not just doing this for other people too. I I personally, I enjoy eating, (laughs) I do. I enjoy eating my own pie. Um, But no more than that, I think there's just something really valuable about just having something you love to do that, you know, and I really do think of it as sort of like my art, right? I mean, you know, a a lot of people paint or, you know, dance or, you know, there, there are other things that, that might be more clearly labeled arts, but for me, it's a time to just sort of like be almost like meditative, I guess. Um, Mm. 
doesn't, it's not something that like drains me of energy anymore. And now that it's something that I've sort of done so many times, it's almost like a, a relaxing, calming practice that I can turn to and makes me feel a little bit more like myself. It gives me some time to pray. So it's, I think it's just a good, a good thing to have in my life. Um, even like, you know, let's say I never got to see anyone enjoy it. I mean, I think that would obviously that would be sad and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't prefer it to be that way. But I think even aside from just like witnessing other people's enjoyment of it, I think it's a good practice for myself. Um, and just, just, um, yeah, just something that takes a little longer. It's a little slower of a thing to do. And I think it's good to have things that, that, that help us be slow and help us just sort of take time and, um, just be with God a little bit. So right now we're sitting in Jess and Levi's backyard and we can see the, there's a giant window that frames the kitchen. And in my mind, I was seeing Jess there, uh, plucking stems off of berries and, you know, like packing down a crust into a pie pan, which which I've done with Jess, which, which you know... we almost did before we recorded yeah. <laughs> this show, but um, in the interest of time, since, you know... Yeah. And, you know, you and I have had really beautiful conversations making pies in different parts of the world uh-huh. together. And But that point that you made about how baking pies and for somebody else that might be something different, uh, but for you, baking pies is a way of, of spending time in meditation and thought with God. And it brought me to a poem that I heard on a podcast. I'm just going to read a few bars of it. The title of the poem is What You Missed That Day You Were Absent From Fourth Grade by Brad Aaron Maudlin. It says, Mrs. Nelson explained how to stand still and listen to the wind, how to find meaning in pumping gas, how peeling potatoes can be a form of prayer. She took questions of how not to feel lost in the dark. Um, and then it goes on, but that there's a line in there about how peeling potatoes can be a form of prayer. Mm. But what, when you were when you were sharing that thought about this crafting of a pie and this how it's an art, I thought about what are the, what are the activities in my life that are that are forms of prayer that I just haven't um, woken up to that yet. Mm-hmm. Like I haven't like named it as this is, mm-hmm. and sometimes something so mundane. Yeah, or, you know, even if something's really beautiful, if we're making something beautiful in our life, sometimes it, we, we're not quite tuned into that. It can be a form of prayer or it is a form of prayer. I was just going to say too, I think sometimes, like even for me saying out loud that making pie is a form of prayer almost sounds pretentious to me when mm. I when I hear it. I know it's not, and, and I, I think I know what I mean when I say it, but... I think it took a long time for me for me to be comfortable saying that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, because I think for a long time I thought of prayer as being a very clearly defined, you know, something with like a clear start and finish, done in a certain way. Um, and I don't I don't necessarily see prayer in such a clearly defined one one way of doing it. Um, yeah. I think I think now to me it's just it's hard to find time to be quiet and just, and listen and even just remember that God is there with me. I tend to be very rushed and hurried, um, less so now, um, than I, than I was maybe a year or two ago, but, but still anything that can kind of help ground me and slow me down is a, is a good time for, for prayer. Mm. And so the process then is a, a slow down, it, take, yes. it takes a long time to peel apples and pears. And yeah, yeah. And making the making the pastry, I mean, I don't, that's something I don't have to think about anymore, but it involves, you know, about 20 minutes of just like literally standing with my fingers in butter. like butter and, and flour <laughs> and just like just breaking it up. It's very calming mm. and, and just take that time to be still. Can you talk to me a little bit about pies and communion. Do we, do we want to define communion? Before I don't know. I don't know. Just... I don't know if I want to. Okay. Well, okay. I'll give you a little bit more context. So uh, when Jess and I were talking about this in the car with Pippa, a communion came hand in hand with the word celebration. And you made reference that 
a pie can elevate a moment. Mm. So what is it about pie that uh, lifts a moment and how is that a spiritual, how can that be a spiritual thing? So, okay, so when I hear the word communion, I guess I, I think of other words that are similar to like community, mm-hmm. commune, just sort of like a drawing, like drawing together mm-hmm. is what comes to mind for me. Really, so if we're talking about how this relates to spirituality, I mean, really at the heart of the story of the Bible, the entire story that that God tells through the Bible, I think through creation as well, definitely through the Gospels, is a story about relationship and wanting to be in relationship with us and providing his son Jesus um, in order to draw us into relationship with him. And that's the same the same thing that he wants for us to have with each other. I think he gives us relationships um, in order to learn about him and about his character and about um, his son. And and so I don't think that any of those things can really be like separated out. I think I think of you know all sort of all relationship, all time spent together with other people as just different ways of of understanding God and who he is um, and what he's, what he's doing in our lives. So I'm kind of just picturing like when I can have a a group of friends um, around my table and I've made a pie and I'm cutting everyone a piece of pie and we're Mm. talking about something that's important to us, or maybe we're playing a game or whatever, you know, whatever it is that's happening because there's lots of different scenarios, but it just, I mean, I think that's just a real picture of togetherness for me. And, you know, everyone sort of partaking in the same food and sort of enjoying it together, sharing it together. Again, we talked about how, you know, it is something that takes maybe a little bit more time to make and people tend to really enjoy it or have special memories or, you know, have a favorite, maybe, you know, some people have like their favorite pies too. Like if I, I know, you know, a good, like a good friend of mine, like really loves apple pies. Like when they come to visit, I'm going to make them an apple pie because, you know, that I know that that's yeah. going to make them feel loved. So I'll try to, you know, try to, try to sort of tailor the experience to, to help people feel loved. But I think, um, I think it's just a very small way that for me, that I can help people feel that God cares about them as individuals too. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it, it, and when I, when I go to someone else's home and I feel loved and cared for, it's very often, um, to do with a meal or, you know, being fed, Mm -hmm. um, or just, yeah, being fed, you know, physically or spiritually. But I have definitely benefited so much from those, you know, displays of hospitality. And I just, yeah, I, so I, I find it very important for myself to try to extend that because I know how important it's been in my own life. That's so good. So, so a word that came to mind as you were talking about togetherness is warmth. I think that is, that is a a piece of hospitality and like a pie when it's served usually is warm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a cold pie, but there's this warmth um, to it. There's probably a word in a different language for this, but you can have a group of people together and then you put something on the table and all of a sudden it, the scene becomes more intimate and Mm -hmm. there's a, there's stronger threads pulling people together into what you call this togetherness this community, this communion of sorts. And you might, be, you might see it with like putting, just adding, putting a candle on the table could do that, could make the excuse for the people in the room to turn into um, one another and into themselves to add more reflection. But just when you were talking about going to other people's homes and seeing it in your own home and table and, food and um so i so i study belongingness for my personal research one of my favorite definitions of belongingness that i've come across is the term at homeness mm. and i love that term because it takes the zip code away from 
where you think you're from and it it makes it more um home can be anywhere where you experience warmth and communion and community amongst other pieces but you know when i think of pies i think of warmth and home mm-hmm. i think of the sense of mutual joy around yeah. something that is literally warm yes. that creates this this thing of of at homeness and I, I think maybe the reflection point um from this part of the conversation to think about what are the things that you can bring into bring onto a table or bring to a a group of people who are visiting you or you are visiting to create that sense of um at homeness and that uh, everyone's hearts are warm at the same time. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's baking a pie, or maybe that's asking an important question that needs to be asked, Right. and only you can ask it. Or maybe that's washing each other's feet. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I feel for sure that I have many homes. I love my literal home, um, and I hope that it feels like a safe, place for many people. It feels like a safe place to me, but I also have many homes that are actually my friends' homes or other places that that I feel that warmth and connection and um, just feel very, you know, well looked after and cared for when I'm there. And yeah, I just, I think it really can't be, I think that really can't be underestimated, the, the importance of that within a, like a faith community beyond, um, you know, beyond like a church building or, you know, you know, an ecclesial hall or, you know, just sort of like a public gathering space, which is also, you know, a wonderful thing to have and a, and a great place to share time together. Um, I just really strongly believe that when you start bringing people into your literal home where you live is where some of the, the most important faith building conversations happen. And so I just, I can't really understate the importance that that's, you know, that's been in my life. And Mm -hmm. I think many others would share the same sentiment. It definitely feels like home here. When you were talking about these different homes that you have, it's something clicked with me about Jesus in that, you know, foxes have holes and cardinals have nests. I'm not sure how the verse 100% goes, but the son of man has no place to rest his head which Mm -hmm. in maybe in an abridged version could be read that the son of man has no home and i think the subtle point there is that we can look at these different vignettes of jesus and see how he made home he made this sense of at-homeness with people Mm -hmm. and sometimes that was drinking wine together and and eating bread and sometimes that was simple acts of kindness but another thing that i was thinking about is I can't remember what made me think of it, but is like pie sharing something that is a vulnerable thing for you? Mm. So when I set out to become a uh, a maker of pies, which I, I don't think I ever expected that it would be sort of like this thing that I am known for, which is definitely true. I mean, people will just you know, send me any, you know, internet links they see that have to do with pie, which I am like, I'm so happy to be that person. I love it. Keep it up. That's great. Like, I love, I love that stuff. Um, But I I guess I didn't expect to like fully lean into that maybe so much in my life when I, when I said like, hey, I'm going to learn how to make pie. Um, But, um, you know, I think there's, I think for me, it's good to have something like that, that uh, people can sort of know about me and like relate to me about. I wasn't a super great pie baker when I started. I've definitely gotten better <laughs> over over time. And I did have to put myself out there a little bit to just to kind of be like, hey, like I've decided to make all 300 pies in this book. This is only pie number seven. Do you want to try it? <laughs> you know, like I, de- you know, I sort of had and, and you know, I had many you know, willing friends and family members who have supported have supported me along the journey. But it felt a little silly at first to, to sort of say like, I'm on this quest, you know, and yeah, this pie didn't really come out the way I thought it would, but you know, do you want to, do you want to try some anyway? And so, 
yeah, I think there is a, a, an, an aspect of vulnerability there. I mean, just in having something that I do care so much about and then just like constantly offering it to other people, mm. I think that that just takes some intentional um, decision to like, to, to kind of say, look, this is, I've made, I made this. I like, I made it because I want to share it with you and I love you, but you know, also you might not, <laughs> you might not like it <laughs> yeah. or, you know, you don't, and you don't have to try it, but here it is. And just kind of like continually like make, just like making offerings constantly. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I was, that was my next question was tell, like, talk to me more about offering. Like, I feel like that's a word that has surfaced in a lot of, I guess, more Christian uh, friend conversations, like an offering. And, some, and when we think about like biblical offerings, usually there's like blood and pigeons and goats and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, bulls. But yeah. can you tell me more about what it means the intersection, she, she's of grain, she's of grain. She, the around. wave offering. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more about the intersection of pie and offering. Pie and offering. I really think this comes back to a thought that we explored a little bit earlier mm. in just that this really, again, we could be talking about anything. We happen to be talking about pie. Um, whatever it is you do and that you have chosen to do, I, I think you just need to give it away. I mean, you can't just don't keep don't keep your gifts or your the things that you spend your energy on for yourself. Mm. I think that mm. would be mm. where how I see those two things connecting like in my life with pie and offering because again, it's not, you know, it's not really about the pie. The point is I think it's important to give away, you know, give away mm. what you what you do and give away who you are um, because you know ultimately Jesus gave him his whole his whole being for us mm, mm. so any little any little pieces of ourselves that we can give I think the closer we are to to becoming like Jesus and, and uh, to drop back to an earlier point about how it's it doesn't need to be perfect you I know have a very I have a very specific uh, like pie fail yeah, story. Yeah, go, yes, go for it. I think it was I think it was pie number eight or nine or something. <laughs> it was called peaches and cream pie. And it was I still don't know what went wrong. And I even emailed the author of my cookbook who I have had like some lovely correspondence with. <laughs> so I, I was like, what happened with this pie? Because I it was supposed to set up, it was supposed to have this sort of like custardy texture with peaches in it. And I refrigerated it and it was like the texture w ended up being basically like peaches with a bunch of like melted ice cream on top. Like it was not, it tasted okay, but it was like a total z disaster. I mean, the presentation was awful. And I, and I brought this to a friend's house for dinner. So that was a real, you know, talking about like vulnerable moments. I was like, oof, I'm really sorry about <laughs> I'm really sorry about this like soggy mess <laughs> that I just put in your freezer. Yeah. I don't know what ha what went wrong, but um, yeah, gonna keep trying, I guess. Yeah. yeah, that's so good. I think there's a number of key messages surfacing in this conversation, but that's something that I think is a really that's a really vulnerable thing to do across any gifts that we've been given is to share the the fragments and the bits and the things that we know like we're not proud of yet, but still share that in trust that that is going to end up with connection and with uh, maybe a laugh or with something, something will still come of that. And, you know, I'll have a, a poem started and I'll ship it off to Levi and say, what do you think? And I know he's going to be honest. Like I know he's going to say, you know, try this or think about that or this line is really bad. Um, but, you know, it's still, it still incites community and connection. Yeah, and absolutely. I thought of, I thought of Ooh, just yeah. something else yeah. I wanted to, to share. So I write a blog about the pies mm -hmm. that I bake. And... What's it called? It's called Piece of Pie. And Piece, piece is spelled P-E-A-C-E. -E like the fruit of the spirit, not like a slice of pie, like not like a literal piece of pie. And it's not, you know, it's like 
not monetized. It's like there's really no real purpose in writing this blog. It's really just um, a, a pastime. And some friends have told me that they enjoyed reading it, which definitely incentivizes me to write it. Um, but yeah, I think so. Another thing that I that I enjoy about this, you know, goal I have for myself of working through this pie cookbook is that it gives me a just like a it's like a storyline that it sort of brings to my life. It helps me um, remember that everything in my life is part of a story. And I think it is really good and healthy to pay attention to the details in our lives and look for the story in them and not just sort of be on autopilot and assume that like every day is going to be the same and, you know, God isn't working in, in the details of our lives. Mm. Um, so that's, that's another aspect to this whole, mm. you know hobby for me that, that, you know, sort of helps my spirituality mm. or, or strengthens my faith. Mm. Cause I have the, the chance to sort of pause and, you know, think back and, and, and think, okay, what was this, what was this story that God told in my life? And Pi is going to be like a little, a feature in that, but really there's, mm. um, there's like a bigger story there. How does the fruit of the spirit intersect with pie baking? Mm. I feel like I have to ask that question because <laughs> it's, right, it's right there. Yeah. It's right there. The fruit. Well, what, what? what's, you know, some people will say love is the fruit, right? And then everything else is, you know, um, a manifestation of love. So God is, a, is naturally, inerrantly a creator. Yes. So tell me about pie baking and creating. So I personally believe that one of the strongest pieces of evidence for a creator, for God, for God to be who he says he is, is the way that he describes himself as a creator and describes people as being created in his image and and to be like him. And I just, yeah, I think that's, I mean, to me, that's really powerful to just think about like all the incredibly, you know, creative people that, I'm blessed to, ha- to to have in my life. And I'm just like always blown away with the things that my mm. friends create and, and do and like the ideas that they come up with and the pieces of art or like the delicious meals that they're mm. able to prepare. And I, I mean, to me, like every single one of those instances points right back to God mm. um, and, and just says like, God is who he says he is because mm. my friend, you know, created this beautiful thing. Like mm. that is, that's like evidence to me mm. that he is real. Mm. And so of course, yeah, to some extent, I, I see that a bit in what I do uh, with pie. I mean, because it is an act of creativity um, in, in, yeah. And so, yeah, just forming something. I mean, just like, yeah, the physicality too of like forming something with your hands. You're kind of like, it's a, there's like a little bit of like sculpting that goes into pie. Mm. Um, and it's, it's you know, it's pretty physical, you know, thing that you do, especially if you kind of make the whole thing from scratch. And um, yeah, and then at the end, you know, you get something that's like way greater than the sum of its parts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think that I would have that drive to create if God didn't, put it in me to begin with. So um, I see that as as a real connection to him. So we had started talking earlier about the fruit of the spirit and how the fruit of the spirit might relate to pie. Mm. So I'll just, I'm just going to talk a little bit about love, joy, and peace. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah. So pie is, pie is a way that I hope that people can feel loved um, and welcomed um, as they're given something that, uh, you know, a lot of love was put into the making of. And then joy, you know, there's so much, there's just so much joy to be found, I think, in the experience of creating something good. We've been, we've been reading Ecclesiastes um, recently and just talking a lot about um, that there's nothing, there's really nothing better in life than to 
Um, just like have an attitude of joy in whatever it is you're doing, whether you're just, you're eating or drinking or just sort of these things that we do every day um, to have that, that attitude of joy. For me, you know, creating something that is good that I can share with people I love, that gives me jo- great joy. Um, and then peace, again, you know, this is an activity that does force me to slow down, um, to take time. It can't be rushed. Um, and so um, it does cultivate peace in a sense because, yeah, it just, it just enforces this stillness and, and, you know, creates a space and time for me to, to just be quiet and listen. And, and so that's where, that's where the element of peace comes in to the peace, the peace of pie, as it were. That's beautiful. Let's go eat some pie. <laughs>